Hi, so it's been a little while since I've done a structural tutorial in Revit, um, so I wanted to quickly show you guys how I go about doing structural connections between steel members in Revit, so uh, let's fire it up and, and have a little look. So apologies if you can hear something moving around, it's just my office dog Tilly. Tilly! Hi! Hi! Yes, he's a good girl. A little cockapoo! There she is. Oh, we'll show you. Hello. Right, off you go. Good girl. Right, anyway, where were we? Right, structural steel connections. So, let's start a new project. I will just use the in the box structural template for this. So that this is what everyone will get when they get the, get the software. That'll do, Tilly. Off you go. Good girl. Okay, so starting off, let's do it on floor one, because starting on two seems strange, doesn't it really? So you want to come over to this structure tab. So let's just do between a column and a beam. So first things first, so we've got the a, a column in here already. Uh, not necessarily, it's a bit of a strange column that you'd use. So I'm going to use something that's a bit more typical for what you'd probably see, uh, say if you were doing you know, sort of domestic, um, like a house extension. If you're knocking through a back wall, that kind of thing, for, into a new extension, uh, you'd normally be using something along the lines of a 203-203 UC. It probably wouldn't be anything bigger than that. Uh, obviously, it depends on the loading, um, but that's a fairly typical, a typical size. So let's go and find one of those. So UC, you obviously, so you need to make sure that you're actually in the steel columns family. Sorry, I nearly went down the wrong route there, didn't I? So st structural columns, not structural framing. So framing is all your, your beams. Uh, columns is where your columns are. So if you pick, you know, a steel column member, but out of the structural framing family, it'll be the wrong family, it won't load. So you need to make sure you've got the right family there as well. So steel, and let's use a UC. And then, like I said, we'll go for a 203, 203, 46, because that's fairly standard. Uh, yep, I need to update my families. I've still got the 2023 families, and I'm using 2025 now. I just haven't got around to doing it, because things in the office are busy. So, which is part of the reason why I haven't done one of these in a little while. So there we go. So that's placed a column now on level one. If I turn off one of these elevation markers and we'll just zoom in on that TL thin lines so that gets that looking a bit nicer while we're doing the drafting uh, so we click on that you can see it goes from level one minus two and a half meters to level one zero so you know let's just say let's put that up to level two instead and rather than having an offset we will just have it as zero Apply OK, so that's there. If we now go into the 3D view, again, let's get rid of those. EH to hide. There you have it, there's our lovely steel column. OK, so we've got our column now. Let's go to level 2 and we will stick some beams over to it. Let's hide those as well. So you want it looking a bit nicer than that. So let's place some beams on this now. So we're going to use just this 305 that's uh, that's included in the project already. That's fine, doesn't really matter. We'll have one coming off of the flange coming out this way and another coming out from the web over this way. And you see it automatically sets it back already. So now you want to go over and it's not actually in the structure tab, it's in the steel tab here and you want to go, so connections, it's this little arrow, this is where you sometimes miss it, you want to click on that and this is where you're going to load in all the different connection types that you want in your project. So without that you're just going to have like a standard analytical connection, it's not going to show graphically anything like you want it to. And in here is a whole host of different connection types. 
and we're going to just use a basic shear plate for this demonstration so a simple pin connection okay and we're going to select first the beam and then the column oops I didn't actually have the connection tool loaded there we go the connection general generic connection no that's not what we want we want this shear plate here then select the two structural members and it will automatically based on the parameters that's within the, the family type model your connection which out of the box will be wrong nine times out of ten will be wrong uh, and I will show you in just a second how we go about changing that we'll then do another one for this one just again so you can see it so select both members hit enter Come on, there we are. So let's see what we got. Take it out of the wireframe, we'll go to hidden, you can see things a bit clearer. So, I mean, yeah, not bad. It's probably, well, you know, it, it may or may not be what you want. So that's the thing. So it's just, at the moment, it's just the, the standard generic shear plate. So select your family type, go to edit type, and then modify parameters. And this is where the the power of the steel connection tool really comes into its own. So you've got a whole host of different settings that you can do in here. So you can do cuts in the beam. You can do notches. You can put in beam stiffeners, column stiffeners. Not going to do any of that for these. We're just going to keep it nice and simple. So plate layout, thickness of the plate. You can change which side it goes on to. Or if you have one on both, um, let's change that there. So you can then look in the preview. There you go. So that's now got a plate on both sides, which I mean, I'm not saying that's what we want to do, uh, just to demonstrate it though. So plate now, let's just have it on the left hand side, for instance. The shape of the plate, and you go to plate shape here. Tilly, it's fine. There's a, a pigeon in the back garden and the dog is growling at the pigeon. Dogs doing dogs things. Right, so the bolts, you can change these to all different sized bolts. I'm going to make these M16s. Do, 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 do. Then there's the setting out of them. So edge distance, number of bolts, and then the spacing, the intermediate distance, and then the edge distance, the far side. So, I mean, we could make that 50 and make that 150 and make that 50 again like so and you can see on the preview here that's then spread it out uh, then vertical spacing so this will tell you whether or not it's in the middle or bolts from the section or the plates from the section so that's all to do with where you want this set out in relation to so let's go middle for instance so yeah 50 150 that you know I, I, this isn't based on any calculations for any specific loading this is just as, as an example uh, so then additional plates if you wanted anything um, any additional sort of stiffeners or anything like that or haunches that's where you could create these uh, then you can create your welding as well so you've got these different weld points Again, I'm not going to change that, it's just standard 6mm fillet welds at the moment. And OK that, and then this will actually change both, because they're the same family type. So if you wanted to do then a different shear plate, what you do is the same with anything with families. Do not just change that one, because it will change both. You want to duplicate this, let's call it shear plate 2, but you know, if there's a specific instance that you want this plate used in maybe you could call it you know beam to column shear plate one you know give it a, a description that makes sense basically so it's user friendly but for this let's call it shear plate two and then I'll change the let's make that 250 just so you can see the difference okay apply okay 
that's going to then change there and there you have it so that's very simply it so if you now if you the other thing to think about so you click on the shear plate and it's got secondary member and principal member so that's the member that you're connecting to and that's sort of the member that you're connecting with so if you click on that it'll change it the other way around only I don't think in this instance it will because oh no it will okay I thought maybe the second connection might stop it from doing that because it's kind of breaking it so what it's now trying to do is have a shear plate come onto the bottom flange of this beam instead which obviously we don't want so let's change that back so it's just these little grab handles on the end you can change which way around the connection is going so very handy so yeah that's it in a nutshell um, I hope that's been helpful like I say it's just a very brief introduction into the, the power of the, the structural steel connection tool uh, hopefully you can see there's quite a lot that you can do in there so the best thing really is to, to open it up have a play and uh, and see how it works all right thanks a lot if you found it useful uh, please do give it a thumbs up and a subscribe I really appreciate all of that um, uh, yeah and I'll hopefully post some more fairly soon cheers bye